In today's video, we are going to take a look at animations. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel. So far, we've learned a lot about React 3 Fiber and in this video, we're going to take a look at animations and how do we use them. If you want to follow along with me, I highly recommend watching this series and the playlist from the start. Looking at basic animations, if you can remember, right in the beginning of the series, we managed to animate a cube rotating making use of the use frame hook. But this time, I actually want to animate with animation frames and clips. And the reason is because at some point, we would like to animate a character and make him walk around. But we have to start somewhere. So let's start off by looking at what makes up an animation. Basically, when you import a character, a character will have a list of animation clips which then can be placed into animation actions and attached to a mixer. Every 3D object can have its own mixer that you play the animations on. Now, this might seem very complex. However, in this plugin over here from Dre, we have the use animations hook. By using this hook, it makes it easy for us to extract the actions and play them. Now we're going to test this out by doing some animation on a cube in Blender and then importing it into our scene. In Blender, I'm simply going to show a simple example. Over here, I just have a simple cube and now I'm going to make it move and record the animation. Then we're going to give it a name and export this as a GLTF file. When it comes to animations, it's simply recording where vertices are at a given point. Now you can sometimes animate bones when it comes to characters and that bone is attached to a skin making the limbs move. But in our example we're just going to move this cube left and right. So the first thing I will do is change this view to the dope sheet and then choose the action editor. With my cube selected I will click on new action and this action I'm going to call my swipe. On the first keyframe, if I hit I, I can now select the position, rotation and scale that I want to lock in place. Then let's move the timeline maybe up to a hundred. Then I'm going to move the cube in the Y axis. Hit I, record that location again. And then I'm going to bring it back in the Y axis again this way, hit I, and then I'm simply going to copy this keyframe and paste it at 240. Now this might be a bit slow, so let's move these keyframes into 20, 40, and then 60. So if we play this, this is our swipe animation. Now that we have the swipe animation, we can also see it here if we expand the cube under animations, there is our swipe action. Let's create one more. If I click on this icon over here, it will create a new action for me. So let's remove these keyframes, delete keys, and on the first one, what I wanted to do is just stay static on 20. We're going to maybe move it in the Z axis a bit up. I record it. Then let's bring it down a bit. Record that one as well. And then I'm going to refer to this one as the bounce. Okay, perfect. So now there's a bounce and we also have this swipe. Depending on which action I have selected over here, it will show up on my cube's animation. But I want both of them attached. So on this bounce, what I'll click is the stash. So under the animations on the NLA tracks, here we can see is the swipe and the bounce. Now let's go and export the cube as a GLTF file. 
Make sure the object is selected that you want to export. Click on File, Export, and then here, GLTF file. Let's find the location where our app is in. So over here in public, here's models, and I'm gonna save this one as my cube. Now, remember to select selected object, and then make sure that the animations are ticked on and click on export. We are now ready to import our cube. We are going to make use of these two hooks, the use GLTF from Dre, as well as the use animation. So in the code, let's go ahead and create a new component. This component will be called my cube, and this will be equal to an anonymous function, which returns for now, nil. Perfect. Let's go ahead and extract the model. And this is going to be equal to the use GLTF from Dre. You will see the import here at the top. Then we need to specify the location. So our location is sitting here in public models and cube. So I'm just going to copy the relative path and paste it in here. I can get rid of the public and just have models cube.glb file. For now, just to see if this works, let's go ahead and export a primitive. Now the primitive that we want to export, we can attach an object and that will be our model.scene. So save this and then here in our scene, let's go and add our cube. And now amongst all the trees, we get our cube. Now, I want to console.log this cube out to show you the animations that are attached. But basically the console is full of these numbers and that's because of the previous tutorial. So go back to the trees and let's quickly find out where's all the console logs and remove them. In our tree file. Now close this and let's go ahead and console.log our model. Save it, go back and when we refresh we should see the model over here. Now if we expand this log like before it will show our 3D object but what's different this time is that in the animations array, we can see our two clips, the bounce and the swipe. This now also means that we can have access to these animations. So let's go ahead and create the actions and grab them from the use animations hook from Dre. What we need to pass in is our model dot animations, that array. And now that we have access to the actions, we can create a use effect and inside of this use effect we're going to query the actions and see if it's there and then we're going to say dot bounce and play we can also add a question mark right off the bounce because we don't know if bounce will be there or not and in this case where does it need to apply the animations well, there's a second parameter that we can specify in here, and that is our scene. Once we have specified this and we go back, we can now go to our scene. And if we refresh, we should see our bouncing cube. So now our bounce is playing. And if we go back to the code and change this to be swipe. Now, our cube is bouncing and swiping because we didn't stop the bounce animation. We can uh, just refresh and then it will just be the swipe. But that's a great example of also showing that animations can actually be mixed together and animate at the same time. At least now you understand how to add the animations of an object to your scene by using the hooks from Dre. Now I hope you learned a lot in this video 
And as we continue, we're going to explore animations on characters and how to do player controllers. So stick around for those videos. Remember to subscribe, like this video and comment below if you did enjoy the content. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.